So I've never changed the air cleaners in my in this car. I've had it for eight years. I don't even know where it is. Guess I'll have to look for it because I really don't know where it is. I was watching a few videos. They all look different. Mine's a 2012 and uh, they just all look different. It looked totally complicated to remove as this looks totally complicated to remove. Looks like three torque screws over here to remove this box. This thing looks long enough to accommodate both filters, but I've seen some that there's one on this side, one on this side, and there's like this thing over here and I don't have that. Uh, so I'm just I'm just going by what I see here. I only see one air intake over here mass air sensors here throttle body and here looks like a long air box uh, Mine has two Filters, I don't know if it'll fit both in here, but it just looks like there's one two three torques So I'll see if I can get it off this way. It's gonna be tedious because look there's no room for you to put like a um, impact or anything this is completely new to me, fellas. No idea. Okay, I've loosened these three. Oh, dear. I don't think I have the right filter. It doesn't look right at all. This is rectangle. The one I have is not rectangle. That's no good. I will say, though, it looks pretty good. Like, I don't have to change it, you know? There's a thing over here. There's another one, but it doesn't seem to want to come out. It's a little dirty. This side's not. Either way, I don't have the right one. And as you can see, this is definitely going back because uh, it's completely different, you know? The listing on the eBay thing said it was the same. What are you going to do? So I just banged it, you know, slapped it on the ground. A lot of dust came out, but it really isn't that bad. So I'm just going to put this back and return the other one. I guess it was easy enough to remove this. Wasn't that big of a deal. So as you saw, I dropped my torque wrench all the way down there. It's sitting on that under the pan kind of cover. I'm not going to be able to get down there to get it. So I'm just going to leave it there. Maybe drive it around. It'll fall out or next oil change. They'll get it for me. I got to find another Torx. Hi. So not really a pleasant experience for me just to change a damn air filter. You know what I mean? Why is it so difficult? Should I change my battery now? I don't think I need to change it yet because it's, it still works just fine. I only bought the battery because Mercedes said it failed the load test. And it is the summertime. I guess I'll change it before the winter comes. I really don't feel like changing it now. So I guess I didn't really accomplish anything today except for putting that uh, double stack pulley on. <laughs> Anyway, I've just about had enough of today's fun. Uh, thanks a lot for joining me on today's video, fellas. Sorry it wasn't all set that uh, exciting, but I am happy that I got the original uh, double stack pulley on there. Took some doing, but you know, you get her done. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. So I changed my mind. I figured I have the battery, why not change it, right? So I watched some videos on how you're supposed to put a jumper pack, negative on here, positive on there so that uh, you won't lose your computer settings, you know, for the programming and all. And then uh, I heard that there's an auxiliary battery in the
bottom of the dash of the passenger side, so I don't need to. But what if that battery's dead? You know what I mean? Uh, I'm not sure. But I think it wouldn't do any harm for me to connect my jumper pack onto here. That way, for sure, you know that the car is being powered by a battery, you know? So, um, there's a 13 millimeter bolt that holds the battery down on a plate. So I'm taking that off. And this looks pretty straightforward. I mean, I was a little worried about it. It's just changing a battery, I understand. But, you know, things that you haven't done before. So you got two wires here connected to the positive and one big not module connected to the negative. It's got this breather hose here too that's connected to the battery. And then this is an AGM battery. I never knew what an AGM battery was until I started doing some research on it. Apparently it lasts longer or something because it has some kind of vent. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna I'm gonna go get the jumper pack and connect it because I want to make sure my 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 settings are right, you know, that they're still there. I don't want to have to go and reprogram everything. Okay, here's the bolt for that. I should try not to lose that. And then there's a plate here. So I guess the battery doesn't rattle around. Can't even get it. There it is, like that. So I guess that holds it down, you know. Okay, so I've got my jumper pack here. And it would be reverse, wouldn't it? Pretty sure that's negative. Pretty sure this is positive. I know it's just a battery swap, but we said negative first. Careful not to touch anything. That's pretty loose right there. I should get something like a rubber glove to put this in it. Just to be safe, you know. Got an old glove here. I'm gonna just stuff this in the glove. That around here. Well, maybe that's not a good idea. Maybe there. I don't know. It's so close to this. You know what I mean? It makes me nervous. You know? Now this one is more. Uh, I can't. I can. Gotta make sure I don't touch anything with this thing. Not the metal. That's pretty loose right there. in here so it doesn't touch anything now I'm gonna lift the battery out it's pretty heavy okay now this hose disconnect this hose Make sure the hose is here here okay I've got my new battery here oh man is that heavy that is heavy man by the way did I mention it was heavy I'm gonna connect this vent actually why don't I see a vent now oh crap was I supposed to take out that that thing? I put that number on the top. I put that on the top. Two. Yeah. Should I put that on there? Yeah. So for some reason, this is not reaching the plug. It's off by couple inches. I don't know why. It's exactly the same. 
same position and everything. I just don't get it. So, something as simple as changing a battery was not that simple. <laughs> I don't know why I was confused, right? But I put the negative on the positive and the positive on the negative. And as a result, there was a jolt. Of well, I realized what I did. It was too late. Now my navigation, my screen, my windshield wipers, they don't work. And I look through all the um, fuses in every compartment and I can't find it. So I got no windshield wipers, got no navigation, got no screen. Car starts fine. <laughs> and I guess it drives okay, but, uh, and everything else seems to be okay. But from what I could figure out, I got no windshield wipers and my navigation screen is off. So no radio either, no radio. So, uh, I'm gonna have to go look through, I think maybe I blew a relay or something like that. I gotta figure out where, why, how. Oh, God. to be continued. That doesn't work! Oh my God, what a fucking nightmare! So it's the next day, and I've been doing research all night on, uh, what could be wrong with my car. Uh, after... <laughs> You guys saw, I messed up. I mean, how could I mess this up? But I messed it up, okay? Uh, I put the positive on a negative, negative on a positive, caused a short, sparks. The terminals on the new batteries are kind of melted. They won't even fit on there very good, you know, but managed to clamp it on there pretty tight. And while the car starts just absolutely fine, really quick, the way it's supposed to, um, my windshield wipers don't work, and... Um, my navigation, the screen, the radio, all that doesn't work. So uh, then I thought that maybe the windshield wipers not working and the radio not working, it's combined into a relay. So I'm doing research and research and research. And after reading a whole bunch of forums, people were saying that, well, your windshield wiper is not going to work if your doors are open <laughs> or your hood latch is open, which it was. So now I'm thinking they're not related and that the windshield wipers didn't work just because my hood wasn't closed because I've been, you know, working on it and the hood was never closed. So this morning, we're gonna try to just start the car, which starts perfectly. Still, the screen doesn't come on, no matter what you do, right? But let's see, the hood is latched, both doors are closed. <laughs> So it wasn't that. So there's nothing wrong with the windshield wipers after all. It just was off because the hood was open. And that's like a safety feature, I guess, because you don't want to hurt anybody touching the windshield while the windshield wipers are moving. So now I know that the radio and screen, the navigation and the radio not working, has nothing to do with the same circuit as the windshield wiper. So then I watched another couple of videos saying that I checked all the fuses everywhere. But there's actually a small fuse, 10 amp or 15 amp fuse on the back of this radio. So I'm thinking maybe because I shorted the battery, that um, fuse popped. And that's the only th other thing wrong with this is that the radio doesn't turn on that's connected to the screen. So maybe I'm gonna take this assembly apart, reach behind the radio from this vent area and pull out the fuse in back of this radio and see if it's good or not. If it's bad, we'll pop a new fuse in there and we're good to go. That's the thought process today. My friend Roger McDonald traded some of my stickers that he bought and traded it with another YouTuber named The Rusty Rooster. Anyway, he sent me one of those stickers and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna paste it on my mowers and blowers wall of fame another youtuber small engine the rusty rooster like and subscribe thanks rusty rooster and thanks roger so here is my husqvarna uh with a 23 horsepower vanguard v-twin in it love the engine from what i remember the engine ran great and I think this tractor ran too. It just doesn't have a deck. This is the one that I stole the uh, roof off of to put on the Blue Bayou. 
Anyway, I decided uh, I was going to list it, and I did list it for like $450. And I'm just listing it for $450 only because I'm thinking the engine's worth about $400. $350 or $400. And I don't really care much about the rest of the tractor because it doesn't do anything, but it's a hauler. You know what I mean? So uh, I listed it for $450, and some guy uh, offered me $400 for it. So I got to make sure this thing starts. I just... Uh, Pulled out the uh, disengage for the freewheel because this is a hydro and see if it rolls. Front tires flat. I'm going to see if I can get this thing started so the guy can come look at it. So I just put the fuel shut off to off. So that it should be uh, drip, uh, dripping fuel into the carburetor, but it won't be dripping because it's a uh, fuel pump. So I'm not sure if there's any gas in here or not, but we're going to see if it starts up. I'm going to take the air filter cover off. Because it's a fuel pump, you need to help it out. It's been sitting here for about a year. gonna spray some go-go -go juice in here just to help it out see if it starts I'm not even sure if the battery's gonna work because it is an old battery too we'll find out Okay, just sprayed some stuff. Choke. What do you think? Got some juice here or no? Nope. Dead. Unless I'm stepping on the wrong thing here. Hi, Bober. Got my multimeter out now. I'm gonna do this stuff all the time. It never fails. It won't just start up. I have to go through this. <laughs> Battery's showing 8.45. So we're gonna need to try to jump this to start. I just hooked up the jumper pack to it and I'm putting in some gas to make sure it'll start with some gas in there. Um, gas tank is in the back and the seat's been up. You can see the nozzle here. It's been raining. It's a terrible design. I wonder if whether or not there's water in the gas tank. You know what I mean? But we're gonna, we're gonna try it now. I don't know we're gonna. Hey, it is a Vanguard, you know what I mean? But I think we need to crank it more to allow the fuel pump to work to get the fuel in there, you know? It's gonna crank a bit. I'm gonna spray some more go-go juice in here just to help it out some more. Open the choke. Spray some more go-go in there.
So I drove it out here to my uh, garage. I'm gonna um, put a charger to the battery. Battery's probably Dunsky. But anyway, we'll see if we get this thing sold today. In the meantime, we gotta try to fix that. Couple of tabs in there, here, under there. And this thing pops right off. Hopefully I'll have enough room to octopus my hands underneath the radio and pull that um, fuse out without having to take the radio out. As you can see, disconnected these three things. And it doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to fit my hand in there because the radio needs to be slid out. Two torque screws here. One there, you lift it up and then you push down and this comes out. Okay, I pulled the radio out and uh, I'm just praying that this is the problem. There you can see a small 20 amp fuse right in there. I'm gonna try to pull it out and hopefully, hopefully it's blown. If it's not blown, I'm screwed because then I don't know why it doesn't work. Yeah, as you guys can see, this fuse is done. Of course, I don't know if I have a fuse like this. I do have a fuse like that. I'm just going to stick this back in, put it back inside, connect the wiring, see if it works. Okay, guys, I just slipped it in. I didn't, uh, I didn't put the bolts in yet. Here we go. Is this it? Yeah, baby, yeah! Ice. Okay, you just put everything back together again. Everything seems to be working. I just took it for a test drive. Everything is A-OK. -okay. As a matter of fact, <laughs> my preset stations were still good. All the settings were fine. So that auxiliary battery is still working. So I'm just gonna put this crap back on again and we'd be good to go. Whew, another one averted. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you do things yourself, you could really it up you know what I mean okay I'll put the covers back on we're good to go so there you go there's my episode in the past two days I gotta tell you I was a little worried for a while because you know my car it's got to be perfect you know what I mean <laughs> just changing a battery caused a lot of headache for me uh, but I refuse to let the Steelership charge me $475, you know, $25, something for the new battery when I spent $200 on getting it, you know? Granted, installing it was uh, another ball of wax, right? Uh, kind of opened up a can of worms too, you know? Uh, but I'm finally glad that I got it figured out. And it's, all the information is out there, guys, on YouTube, Google, the internet. You can find the problem and you can fix it yourself. Do I want to fix it myself? I just don't want to pay the money for the Steelership to do it, you know? Because they charge crazy prices. A battery change like that, I mean, 450 for the battery alone, you know what I mean? And then the, the, the labor involved at the Mercedes dealer to take care of that, I mean, it would have cost me six, $600, 650 something like that, for just the change of battery, you know? I mean, at this point, when I think about all the hell I went through <laughs> to get everything fixed, you know what I'm saying? Uh, probably would have paid it. Anyway, uh, got this out. Uh, maybe somebody will buy it for $400. Um, charging the battery. It started up fine. Um, after I pumped some air in the tires and gave it a jump, uh, that battery is Dunsky, so I think the new guy would have to, you know, probably buy a new battery for it. So, you know, maybe I'll take it down to 375 for him, you know what I mean? I just wanted to get rid of it, you know what I mean? I don't really care much about the tractor itself. It is not the best condition tractor. Uh, the only thing I like about it is the engine. And if I could get 350, 375 for the engine alone, that's fine, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm more than happy. 
given the fact that I found it on the street for free, thanks to a tip from uh, Nick from West Iceland. Anyway, we're charging up the battery. Uh, we did fix the, we did put the OEM um, double stack pulley on the crankshaft to the Toro LX460. So that's ready to go. And uh, this is gonna be ready to go. I got my car ready to go. That's it, it's a, it's a good day already. Oh, and I sold that Toro recycler, made it, making yesterday a better day, you know, for $150 to that lady. But uh, thanks all for joining me on this mishmash of uh, the stuff that I had to take care of in the past couple of days. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowersandblowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.